So one of the things you are warned about when you're getting into your journey on pen testing and ethical hacking is do not randomly download and fire off scripts you found on GitHub. Now we've all heard that advice, but let's be honest, many of us, myself included, are guilty of doing that very thing. We are working on a CTF, we find a CVE that we think it might be vulnerable to, but it's not working. So we just go, we type in the CVE number and do GitHub after it into Google, we pull up a bunch of different repositories, GitHub repositories, and we just fire off the code as we try to break into the machine. We just kind of spray and pray and hope something sticks and we're able to really get into the machine. Well, I found a real world example of why this is a terrible idea and you really should look at the code before you fire it off, not just in the CTF, but especially so if you're doing it in a client environment. One of the worst things that you can do is fire off code code that you do not know the source of and that you have not read yourself. Now, I am part of the Hack Smarter community, which you should be too, coolest community around, and we have a Discord server as well as an active CTF team on various platforms, including Hack the Box. Now, I wanna give kudos over to this community because I just saw this chat as people were working through one of the latest, I, I believe it was one of the latest Hack the Box Seasons machines or a Hack the Box machine. They found this exploit right here. Digging this stuff, I believe for Apache One server and Fiction said, FYI, I was looking for a CV that I found one of the first GitHub exploits is actually installing a crypto miner. Glad I read the code before. And for every Fiction who read the code, there are a hundred people who did not read the code and just fired it off. Suspect said, Hey, I was just reading the code for that. Here's the link for that repo. So we have this repo. We're going to check it out ourselves and we will dig into what's going on. But let's just look at the conversation. Uh, we have suspect a little more brave said, I install it just for fun. And it only creates a cron job. And in the home directory creates X config and renames the miner to dot X. So a hidden file with the dot in front of it. Artho said, can it even mine something without a GPU? Valid question because you're in a virtual machine. Suspect says it mines Monero. Okay, the miner says it's unified CPU, GPU. Suspect said, in my case, when I run the script, it uses 100% of my CPU. And Artho says, well, that should weed out the folks who don't read the code. And yeah, the cron job is meant to start the miner at reboot. Should report it. Yeah, let's report it. I just sent off a report. And it even, I can't get to this in my Wayback Machine because it has been deleted. But one of the issues is the exploit works fine, but... Is it possible to remove the miner from the code? That's pretty good advice. And then now I see the guy who created the script have another one, and again, it's mining. Like, just to point out that this, your mom is a good woman. Amazing, yes. That, that's a very good compliment or insult. I don't know. But here's the thing. This is a very common thing that you will see in the real world of attacks like this happening. So let's go ahead and look at it. I don't even think about this. This is almost like a... I don't know if you would call it a watering hole attack, but if you are monitoring the latest Hack the Box Seasons machine, when that machine comes out, a lot of people are looking for the exploits behind it in order to get into the machine to get those flags. Now, if you are a threat actor and you want to kind of do a watering hole attack and exploit all of these attackers or CTF players looking for this, you could do what this person did uh, unethical, terrible idea, but probably effective, unfortunately. So let's look into what this malicious GitHub looked like, trying to target people looking for this CVE. We begin with some very clearly AI text, a culinary delight, exploiting the digital vulnerabilities of CVE 2024-81757 in Apache. So this repo, I'm not going to read it because it's so AI, but we'll read a little bit of it. This repository contains a tantalizing appetizer for those with the refined palette for digital security. It serves as a guide to a newly discovered vulnerability, a subtle flaw that graces versions of the Apache web server with a touch of delectable danger. First, if your LinkedIn posts sound like this, quit writing your LinkedIn posts with AI. It drives me freaking insane, but you can see it's very much AI. The, the ingredients of exploitation. First, we have our repo, the foundation of our digital culinary endeavor, and of course, our crypto miner. So it says to git clone and then CD over to it. We need a Python interpreter, which is like a delicate concoction. They really, they really went hard on the AI right here. The culinary art of exploitation, target selection, exploiting scripts, serving the dish, blah, blah, blah. But let's go ahead and look at this script. And before I say anything, let me just scroll through this script and I wanna see, do you notice anything that might be out of the ordinary here? We'll just scroll if, if my computer would scroll, right? Oh, 
I'll be quiet as I do it. You guys think about it. Whoops, it's kind of being buggy. Give you a second. Did you catch it? Let's go through this code together. So in the beginning of the code, we are importing libraries. Nothing out of the ordinary here, depending on what libraries the exploit needs to work. But we're importing different libraries. Of course, one library that should catch our eye is the OS library. Now, it might be needed for this exploit. We don't know. But the OS library allows the Python code to interact with the operating system. So that is one kind of little warning flag that should stand out to us. We're setting up a function right here that's really just getting our target. It's parsing out the target for us. And we even have some code here. It parses the target input and extracts the host name and the port. This threat actor, based on what I saw in a Twitter thread, just took this from a working exploit and added their malicious code to it. So all of this up here is legit. Nothing crazy or malicious is going on up here. We have the payload. This is where the exploit logic should be. It should create a crafted HTTP request to exploit that. In this case, we're just returning a placeholder string. So it's going to say whether or not the target is vulnerable. It's going to go ahead and try to send the payload. It's going to do your default socket library to open up that socket to send and do that network communication. If it errors out, it's going to say error during exploitation. And now we have our exploit. If the target is none, so that means if you try to run this without passing an IP, it's just going to tell you, yo, please provide a valid URL or IP port combination. It's going to try to send it, and if it errors out, it's going to error. And then we have a bunch of obfuscation going on on the payload to make it a more, little more difficult to understand. Nothing super interesting here, just doing the obfuscation. You can read through it, some random stuff is doing, going through the payload multiple times and coding it with random hex characters, blah, 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 blah. But here we go. Here's what's interesting. At above, we imported the OS library, and I don't see anything here that needs that, but here we have this. If not, so if this path does not exist, do this, run this, subprocess run, get clone from this repo that has been deleted. I can't, I can't actually look at this repo myself because it's been deleted. Here, I'll zoom out a little bit. And I try to look at it with the web, web archive and that didn't work either. But we have this wit hat or white hat repo and it's getting a something from here, a, a file. And then what it's doing is it's changing our directory to C. Then we are making the c.4down.sh, this bash script executable. And then it's running this bash script and then it's removing the directory we made, and then it's renaming it to the .c, kind of like what we saw on GitHub, and this in the background is serving as a crypto miner. Now, what's probably most malicious about this, not just the fact that it's a crypto miner, but this code up here is legit. This is a working payload, a working POC that if you found this CVE, you would actually be able to use this POC to exploit the vulnerability that you found. But in the process, you are installing a crypto miner on your machine and you will hopefully notice that you have 100% CPU and there's a lot more malicious things that threat hacker could do besides a crypto miner. Think about backdoor, setting up SSH keys, enabling persistence. A lot of people, when they're doing CTFs, are doing this with root privileges. So whatever the user is running with from the root privileges, well, that script is going to have root privileges as well. So crypto mining is honestly pretty innocent compared to what this threat actor really could have done. But this is a lesson for all of us. Before you install random code from GitHub, whether it's a CTF or especially in a client environment, make sure you read through the code. Make sure you look for some of those libraries that may be out of the ordinary. And one of the most common questions I get is, hey, Tyler, do I need to be a programmer in order to be a pen tester? And I always tell them, you don't need to know how to program, but you need to know how to do two things. One, you need to know how to write basic scripts to automate the boring stuff, especially with Python. So you need to know how to write scripts and you need to know how to read code. Because when you're firing off exploits, when you're looking at CVEs, especially a new CVE, like one from 2024, 
before, you need to be able to read through the code, understand what is going on, and making sure some person on the other side of the internet is not trying to exploit you or exploit your excitement of getting that next flag or popping that vulnerability in a client's environment. That's a good way, honestly, to get fired if you're running code that you do not know about and you cause damage to a client environment, or is this a good way to have your VM pwned? Or please don't do CTFs from your host machine, but also your host machine pwned, depending on what your setup is like. So a big thank you to those of you on the Hacksmurder, uh, Hacksmurder Discord who pointed that out to me. Not even just to me, just dropped in the chat and I happened to notice it. Really cool and unique way that you might get pwned if you are running scripts without reading the script ahead of time. So hope you found this video helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.